Hello everyone and a very, very warm welcome to the um, webinar that will be focusing on online learning agreement and the GDPR questions. Um, first and foremost, what we wanted to say is that uh, this is the second webinar that uh, Online Learning Agreement Consortium um, is, uh, has, uh, uh, has the pleasure to host. Uh, the first one actually was in last December and was um, dealing with the recommendations uh, for the next Erasmus program uh, about the program template. And in case you're interested in the discussions that were taking place there, uh, you can still actually follow the webinar and you can you can find the recording in the uh, in the article that was devoted uh, to the webinar in the European University Foundation uh, homepage. Similarly, also for this webinar, we are planning to uh, ensure that there is a follow-up material and uh, there is also a chance for you to, uh, to yes, um, uh, well, tap into the material after the after the discussions and, and be able to share your uh, share your opinions and, and, and your questions. But of course, um, without further ado, uh, what we are dealing with today is indeed uh, the GDPR and the compliance matters. And of course, it's a very, very big topic. And uh, the general data protection regulation, uh, it has really been, been called the, the world's strongest um, data protection rules. And um, what it is, it's indeed changing the rules of the game. And it's not just for EU, but it's also for the uh, countries beyond it. And it's also not just for the private sector and the private companies, but also for the public. And uh, what it effectively means is that everyone has to step up their game and make sure that when we are dealing with the data processing, we are doing it in line with the core values of this regulation. And um, so, yes, uh, so continuing, um, what we'll be dealing with today then is, first and foremost, we will try to outline the kind of the um, who we are and, and where we are coming and, and basically can introduce to the uh, and set the stage to the compliance matters meetings, meeting the student mobility and um, how exactly it's, this is living in the context of the Erasmus, uh, Erasmus mobility uh, management. Uh, then we'll deal and, and deal with and discuss the general principles of the GDPR and uh, in particular we will highlight the legal basis for the data processing as well as duty uh, to provide information to the data subject. Um, then very briefly we'll have um, yes kind of summary and the conclusions of, of the topics that we'll be addressing and then there will be a session for the questions and answers. Um, so the last two ground rules that I would love to um, I'll present now is uh, the first one is about the microphones. So um, at the moment the basically the framework and the and the tool that we have chosen for this webinar is uh, yes go to meeting and uh, what it does, it allows you to potentially also unmute your phone and, and basically participate. But we would ask you and really very kindly, um, yes, um, require, well, we would require you to keep those microphones um, muted till the end of the meeting because uh, so that the presenters can, uh, yes, uh, basically explain all the topics and explain all the, all the agenda points. Um, and then if we have the time and, and, and we'll see then uh, how, how actively you want to participate, we would have potentially such option at the end of it. So when you join the meeting, uh, automatically your mic is muted. So we would really ask you to keep them muted. Uh, but the second ground rule that we also want to, want, to, want to share and actually encourage you is to use the chat option. Um, so what it allows you to do is actually share already the comments and questions that you might be having throughout the presentations uh, there. And um, uh, so what we are also planning after the presentation, um, we will have uh, the chance, of course, to address the most pressing topics and the most pressing issues. And basically, we'll try, do our best to summarize the, the, well, the, um, the questions that you'll be having in the chat. But what we also want to really do is to make sure that we can address all the, um, basically the kind of uh, more detailed aspects in, in, in a very um, clear way. Uh, so yeah, and what I'll be doing now, I'll mute someone's microphone who is, which is not unmuted. Um, yeah, well, throughout the presentation, I, I might be, I might be, it might be necessary to do that. Uh, but yes, so um, we would we would ask you to, uh, we would, well, we really encourage you to kind of ask these questions there uh, and. The way we will create this follow-up material, uh, we are planning to really summarize and, and, and address in a more elaborate way uh, the, yes, the questions that you might be having there. 
And that will be then uh, published in the Erasmus Europe Paper Competence Center. You might have noticed that there is already a section that is devoted to, devoted to the compliance matters, uh, but this would be potentially something that could, could add up to that. And, and, and we think that, um, yeah, the, the focus that you might be having now today and, and, and the aspects that are most interesting to you or the most relevant or the most, uh, I don't know, worrying or whatever that is, um, yes, we would love to would love to do that in a in a very in a very detailed and elaborate way. So so that's the plan. Um, so uh, to sum up, uh, we encourage you to ask the questions there. We will uh, we will address the most uh, the most topical matters in the questions and answers. But more details, we really want to do justice to your questions. We will do after that also in written that will be accessible. Um, well, of course, uh, also then later and can be reused and 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 can be uh, then uh, discussed even further. But okay, so that's that's so to say the agenda and that's so to say the, the ground rules. Uh, but next to that, um, what I also want to then, uh, then quickly do is to introduce to the speakers of today. Um, well, I'm Daiga from the European University Foundation and, and I have the pleasure to do the, do the opening, but uh, the, the big work and, 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 and uh, the more detailed aspects of the GDPR will be discussed uh, by our colleagues from the University of Marburg, uh, Christina, David and Michelle. And uh, they are our dear colleagues who are dealing with the compliance matters within the context of online learning agreement and the Erasmus dashboard. But of course, they are not the only ones. Um, but yes, uh, they are the, 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 the university, they are the kind of the core group uh, that is facilitating these discussions. Um, Unfortunately, January is quite a busy time and, and, and there are quite some deadlines and quite some, quite some events and quite some, well, uh, sickness periods. So, um, but, uh, but yes, of course, um, uh, we'll, you'll also see more colleagues um, discussing these matters and, uh, for example, in the, in the Luxembourg conference that we'll be having uh, already in February. But yes, um, then very, very briefly, just kind of a general outline of the, uh, of the project. And, and in the next slide, what we can see actually is at the, um, other colleagues that are also dealing with these matters, which is, for example, the University of Bergen, the University of uh, Erasmus University of Rotterdam, um, University of Alcala, and uh, yes, also University of Vienna, um, uh, University of Paris Sorbonne, um, um, uh, Wuch University of Technology, and yes, of course, also the, the students' uh, students' uh, aspect and, and the students' voices uh, represented by the ESN. So this is basically the kind of the core uh, core group of of, of, of partners and and and. Uh, uh, universities um, creating uh, the online learning agreement and, and, and further working on it. But of course, uh, they are just uh, next to these next to these colleagues. There are many, many more, and then we're also always so uh, immensely happy to get, receive more feedback and, and and be able to discuss it with you and make sure that the infrastructure is is growing and growing in the right direction and uh, we can um, implement and and further advance it in the ways that are really truly supporting the core values of Erasmus program, which I also was, was very nicely discussed in the previous webinar, um, making sure that, yeah, we are very much on the same page of, 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 of how it can um, support more transparency, um, more efficiency, and, and uh, make sure that both the staff and the students can be in the win-win position. And, uh, and the online learning agreement as such, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's a project and it's a, it's a tool that has been born already quite some time ago. The first prototypes were back in 2014. Since then, it has been growing immensely. It has been adding the much more features to the, to the student side, also much more features to the university and well, higher education institution side. And of course, also in, uh, in involving us, uh, other, other parties and, 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 um, and other stakeholders that need to be uh, participating in this process, and uh, they're quite some. Uh, they're quite some uh, uh, very beautiful numbers as we as, as we think um, of more and more institutions uh, seeing the seeing the merit of, of trying it out and, and, and seeing the merit on um, seeing and, and, and testing and, and, and already maybe turning into fully digital uh, processes and, and managing their mobility in, in this way instead of doing it just on paper. And uh, so yes, it's quite a lot of feedback. That we are getting from them it's quite a lot of uh, very interesting discussions that we are always having with them and uh, of course that's also a very very big responsibility of how um, we can make sure that we are doing uh, doing it to the best of our uh, capacity and the best of our knowledge and uh, how we can make sure that all that information is translated into uh, the design and the requirements of the next program of how we can use this uh, the process of turning from paper to digital form and uh, making sure that we are 
cherishing, yes, all the values that we want to be there um, to the fullest. So I would say that that's, uh, that's uh, enough from my side for the very brief introduction. And with that, I will be giving then uh, the floor to, to my colleagues from the University of Marburg and uh, Christina. Thank you, Daiga. Thank you very much for the introduction and for giving a short overview of the project and um, what we are about to do. So uh, within the following about 60 minutes, maybe less if we are good in time, uh, we will be talking about the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation for the EU, and especially with the focus, of course, of, on the Erasmus student mobility. Um, what is relevant, as Daiga already mentioned, is to understand how the regulation directly relates to um, the mobility activities and um, how we in the project, especially the online learning agreement and the dashboard, implement the GDPR compliance. Um, first, uh, let me uh, set the scene a bit and refer back to the digital structure that Daiga has already presented shortly. Um, so, we are talking here about the online learning agreement and the dashboard uh, made mainly, but of course these tools are part of the whole digital infrastructure that's being developed in the context of Erasmus. These tools, um, and I expect that most of you have heard most of the relevant keywords like Erasmus without paper, the European student card, uh, inter-institutional agreement manager, uh, all these tools are designed to help higher education institutions in managing student exchange. Uh, but of course, um, these mobility management processes entail access to personal data, and thus they are concerned by the implementation of this GDPR, this regulation that has been uh, coming to force uh, in 2018. So to understand how we have to uh, implement it and how it does affect our work with the Erasmus program, we have to understand the basic principles of GDPR and relate it back to practical experience. Um, first, some short summary on the GDPR so that you get a bit of a timeline and the main uh, aspects of the GDPR. The reg regulation is uh, concerned with data protection and privacy, and it was already adopted actually in April 2016 though it is enforceable since 2018. Uh, so as you can see by now, we have had some time to understand and implement the core issues of the GDPR. It contains provisions and requirements related to processing personal data data subjects so of individuals. And the primary aim is to give control to these individuals over their own personal data. So if we look from the perspective of the institutions, I presume that most of the participants today are education institutions. Uh, the GDPR requires institutions to ensure appropriate technical and organizational to implement these data protection principles. So we have a responsibility towards uh, the subjects, the data subjects, in all our uh, processes and all the tools we are using. Um, here you have a short overview of the core principles of data protection. Uh, we will discuss all these in detail during the session, but just to give you an idea of what aspects of uh, data protection and privacy we are talking about. So the GDPR refers to lawfulness, fairness and transparency of data, uh, uh, the purpose limitation, data minimization, accuracy, storage limitation, integrity and confidentiality and accountability. So uh, very large issues that we have to deal with in implementing GDPR in our procedures. And um, as I said, we represent the consortium that uh, is developing the online learning agreement and the dashboard. Uh, so in the implementation and the development of these tools, uh, we have, of course, designed it according to compliance with GDPR. Uh, so the question is, how do we do it? How can we ensure in the projects, in the tools, that GDPR compliance is indeed in place? I want to say a few words on uh, the development of the tools so you can get some idea of how we in the projects ensure GDPR compliance. And let me have a look at my notes. Um, so um, 
GDPR, as I mentioned before, is enforceable since May 2018. So in the online learning agreement projects, GDPR has already been identified as a core task early on. And the online learning agreement project that uh, is at the moment in its last phase, it started in 2017. And there we started already with GDPR compliance as a, an independent core work package to ensure GDPR compliance in all the developments. Um, the consortium, as Daiga uh, mentioned it earlier on, consists mostly of higher education institutions as well as the Erasmus student network. So to include as well the student perspective and the university network, the EUF, so we have quite a wide spectrum of actors in the development of the online learning agreement and the dashboard. And this helped us in having peer review in all the developments and evaluations in the development of the online learning agreement. And now in addition with a new project, the online learning agreement 3.0, because it is still being developed further, of course, um, we will have an external GDPR audit as well to ensure that all the measures and uh, developments are in place to ensure GDPR compliance in the projects. Another aspect where compliance is reflected are, of course, the terms and conditions and privacy policy that, you, uh, that we update uh, regularly uh, so that all aspects of GDPR are in place and are transparently uh, published on the websites. So you can actually check all the details of the GDPR in our uh, information online. Um, so this gives you a bit of an idea of what we are talking about and uh, what is important when we go now through all the details of GDPR uh, is how to relate it to your practical work because GDPR as a regulation seems for many I think very abstract and uh, maybe a bit scary because it really asks a lot of institutions and individuals to consider to put into place um, and we have to make sure that we identify the links between the regulation and your work with Erasmus Mobility. Uh, so now our, my colleagues, David and Michelle, will present the principles of GDPR and the aspects uh, that are relevant for our discussion. So I hand the floor for now to David. Well, thank you, Christina. Um, also warm welcome from my side. And uh, yeah, we now would like to go into uh, more detail about the different principles, but before we do so, there are two more things that I would like to mention. We actually focus on a European legal-based point of view here, so we're not taking national legislation into consideration. And also, we're looking on the uh, aspects from the EUF perspective, so not from higher education institutions. So there's still a need for transition at your universities. But now, without any further delay, we would like to go into detail regarding the different principles. So the first principle is uh, lawfulness, fairness and transparency, which means that data actually has to be collected in a way that is understandable for the data subject. Also, this transparency needs to be short so the data subject can understand why and how its data is collected. Um, yeah, and of course, all those principles like fairness, transparency, and lawfulness need to be communicated before actual data transfer is taking place. So for that, you need complete terms and conditions and a privacy policy in place to assure that you actually obey into this principle of GDPR. So the next principle is purpose limitation, which states that Personal data are collected for specified, explicit, and legitimate purposes and not further processed in a manner that is incompatible with these purposes. So, in other words, you explicitly need to define what you're collecting data for and may not overstep the boundaries you set by doing so. But for a more practical point of view, I'll hand over again to Christina again to give you a more experienced and practical point of view here. Okay, thank you, David. Um, as we mentioned earlier on, um, all these um, principles uh, are really relevant for all the aspects of mobility and we have to uh, differentiate between different levels, different actors that are involved in the mobilities, different phases of mobility. Um, 
and we have here to make it more uh, more practice oriented we have tried to uh, give some examples uh, along the lines of the mobility stages so as you can see if we talk about the principle principle of purpose limitation um, if we look at what data we require during the mobility stages um, we have to be clear about the purpose sometimes the purpose might be defined by the program regulations so by the erasmus program sometimes it is defined by your institution as an example for very sensitive data that we have to acquire from the participants is for example before the mobility the bank details for payment of the grant but only for that so we have to be clear in advance what we take the data for and as well we have to uh, store them and ask for them at the right stage in the mobility so for example bank details would only be asked from those students who actually participate in the program so you would ask for these data not at the time of application but after selection and nomination once it is clear what participants actually do the mobility within Erasmus uh, so you have the purpose limitation and you have to be clear what uh, participants what data subjects really require to give you this information during mobility one example is the contact information of relatives which can be gathered for emergencies um, and of course cannot be stored further on maybe but uh, this is another aspect we have to consider and then after mobility uh, a limited personal information for statistical purposes for example so you have an, a huge amount of data as you all know that you need during the administration of all the mobility activities but you have to clearly define for what purposes you might need a part of the data still after mobility and there's always some data that you uh, will have to delete uh, because uh, there is no not the purpose anymore given for storing them further so just to give you some idea with these examples of how it pertains to your administration of mobility activities and now david for the next principle thank you um the next principle we'd like to introduce is uh, data minimization personal data shall be adequate relevant and limited to what is necessary in relation to the purposes for which they are collected and or further process um, I think this one strikes to be quite clear that you can't collect any kind of data you want and that you really have to try to downsize the information the data you collect for the purposes you follow up for the aims you have so um, also here I'd like to hand over to Christina again because she can give you the more detailed and more practical point of view on this one Thanks. As you might notice, we use one laptop, so we have to move around a bit, but that makes it only more dynamic, so I hope you can bear with that. Um, so an, another aspect you might notice already, that all these principles are interlinked. So if we talk about data minimization, of course, we have to link this to all the other principles as well. With data minimization, as uh, David said, we have to make sure that only those data are stored that are required. And here again, we rely on program regulations. So there's different levels uh, of who and uh, how is defined what data we actually need. So there's the regulations that are mandatory from the Erasmus program. There might be data sets that you uh, are required to uh, store from your internal structures the uh, examples we have here before the mobility for example usually you cannot store any sensitive data that are not required for the mobility for example a photograph of the participant there might be cases however for example for visa application where you have to actually store uh, store a copy of the passport for example so uh, you always have to make sure to only uh, take those data that are actually required in the specific case as well during mobility uh, you have might have to change data during the process of mobility if it is affecting mobility one clear example is the documentation of illness if it uh, relates to the mobility activity for example by students failing the exams due to illness you have to store this information but if it doesn't affect the mobility you have no right to do that 
So you have to always make sure you have only those data that are actually required for reporting or for the implementation of mobility. The same after mobility, of course, there's a number of data, as we said before, that might not be required anymore for processing or for the documentation. Uh, so this information can and needs to be erased. For example, telephone numbers of contact persons that are not relevant anymore after the mobility is finished. So, um, as I said, most of these procedures have to be clearly implemented in your processes as well. We are talking here about the online learning agreement and dashboard, but of course, this is transferable to your procedures in your institutions as well. So, we have more uh, principles we will have to discuss, so I give over again to David. Thank you. Um, then we have the principle of accuracy. It states like, first bullet point, personal data shall be accurate. Uh, where necessary personal data have to be erased or rectified to meet the reasons for processing and erasure or rectification has to be performed without delay. So, in other words, the data has always to be up to date and changes need also to be communicated to the data subject to fulfill this principle of GDPR. And also here we have a more detailed, more practical point of view by Christina. <laughs> So, okay, um, again, you will recognize the structure and um, here we refer to some of the discussions we had in the online learning agreement uh, regarding the um, accuracy of data that have been uh, filled in, for example, by the students or that might change during mobility. As David said, uh, the data have to be uh, correct and have to be completed and uh, accurate. So if there is changes in data or if there are mistakes in data, it has to be corrected. Um, this is, of course, uh, an issue if students fill in the data themselves and then after signing, it cannot be changed. But still, the GDPR requires accuracy in the data. So it might be relevant to change data even if it is uh, only by mistake, but still uh, this is a requirement. So before mobility, we have to make sure that the data are complete and accurate. And if there are changes during mobility, uh, still these data have to be uh, corrected. It has to be monitored so that changes can be implemented. Another aspect is, of course, after mobility. Because after mobility, usually we don't have so much control over the data anymore, but still we have to store the data and we still have to administrate the mobility procedures. So data might have to be corrected even after mobility. And it might happen that we have to correct data after mobility on demand of the students, for example, if they have a change in the home address and ask you to correct the data, then you have to actually fulfill this requirement. Uh, but of course, for a number of the data sets that we use during the mobility, uh, those changes might not take place, but it is your responsibility to ensure the accuracy and to ensure the implementation of procedures that uh, make this GDPR uh, compliance relevant. Okay, and actually, now we have David again. I think, oh no, now I hand over actually to uh, my other colleague, Michelle, who will uh, present some further principles of GDPR. Yeah, first a warm welcome from my side too, and thanks to my colleagues. Um, now we would like to introduce the principle of storage limitation. This means personal data shall be kept in a form which allows identification of data subject for no longer than necessary for the purposes for which they are processed. In our case, the storage period is five years. This can be seen in the Erasmus Plus program guide from 2019. After storage period required by program regulations, there may pertain different regulations for documentation at your institutions that can differ from the five-year period. However, OLA dashboard cannot start data beyond this given period. Longer storage will have to be ensured within the institution structures. Beyond the five-year period, storage for statistical reasons may be needed. Here, anonymization of data is required. Only the relevant data for statistics should be stored. 
Furthermore, there's a principle of integrity and confidentiality. Um, for compliance with this principle, personal data are processed in a manner that ensures appropriate security. This means appropriate technical and organizational measures have to be taken to ensure security. Examples for these measures are password protection, um, access limitation, or that only international relation officers and departmental coordinators have access, or that you always use a virus and malware protection program as well as a firewall. For more information, you can follow this link to the Competence Center of the EWP, where you can find more, more practice, good practice advisors. The last principle that we want to present is the one of accountability. This means that you have to be able to demonstrate compliance with all data processing principles that we introduced earlier. In other words, you need a complete documentation of all measures undertaken. Examples for said documentation are a directory of procedures or a risk assessment documentation. Next to that, um, we would like to move on on the legal basis for data processing regarding OLA dashboard. Once again, we would like to emphasize that we are looking at the program from EUF perspective, sorry, um, as owner of the platform. This means the legal basis for data processing is Article 6, Paragraph 1, Litera A, in combination with Article 7 and 4 GDPR. Therefore, consent has to be given freely, specific, in an informed and unambiguous indication, and a written declaration. We, want, uh, we now want to illustrate the process of receiving the authorization for data processing. There are two scenarios how the process can be initiated, either by the student or centrally by the higher education institution. In both scenarios, we need consent to process data. Now the question is how this can be achieved. One possibility is that the student actively agrees to the ter terms and conditions and privacy policy in the EULA registration process. The other possibility is that the student allows the higher education institution to enter his or her data to the dashboard through the application for Erasmus, or that it is already part of the study contract. Yeah, now David will go on. Thank you, Michelle. Um, now, shortly, want to take a look at the duties that the data processor has towards the data subject. They can all be found in Article 13 of the GDPR, uh, and this actually circles back to the principles that we introduced earlier. And all the examples we're going to show now are part of the terms and conditions and privacy policy of the online learning agreement, respectively, dashboard. So. The first aspect is that the data subject knows the identity and contact details of the institution. Um, the reason, therefore, is that the data subject shall know whom to contact in case of any incidents, and that there is actually an access point for the data subject to get in touch with the institution that collects the data. The next um, purpose we want to introduce is the purpose of processing itself. Um, here it states, um, we collect information about you for a variety of purposes. These include to enable you to prepare, negotiate, approve, and manage your learning agreement. So also here we circle back to the um, principle of lawfulness, transparency, and fairness, because if it's not communicated, and fairness, if it's not indicated for which purposes is collected to, um, to the processing of data. The next aspect we would like to mention is the transfer to third country or international organizations. And here it states, in such case, the appropriate measures have been taken to ensure that the service, uh, that the service providers comply with the EU general data protection regulation. So, 
the purpose here for is um, for the data subject to know where the data is stored and who is access, especially if there's transfer outside the European Union or to international or organizations. So for the next <clears throat> examples, I'll hand over to Michelle again. So um, the data processor shall also inform the data subject about how long personal data are stored. Um, this has to be done to enable the data subject to know when he or she can exercise his or her right to be forgotten if the data is not deleted anyway. Um, in case that any controversy arises before, during or after the mobility process, this affects the EUF as a platform provider. This dispute has to be settled under European law that is, if needed, accompanied by the substantive law of Luxembourg. However, this is once again the EUF perspective and therefore the national law can change from higher education institution to higher education institution depending on their home country and depending on the contract they bound themselves to. Okay, so for the final phase of the webinar, back to me. Thank you, Michelle and David. Um, I hope it has been good for you. Uh, you have been able to follow the discussion a bit and get some overview of the principles uh, and aspects that are relevant in student mobility program at your institutions. Here you have just a short summary of the relevant web links uh, we you might want to follow up on uh, after the webinar. So we referred already to the competence center of the EWP project. Um, you have the link here and as Steiger mentioned right at the beginning, we already have quite an extensive set of information, uh, FAQ section, uh, you might need, you might might find helpful to evaluate your procedures and to understand the setup and the measures within the online learning agreement and dashboard. Uh, so we really advise you to have a look at this compliance section in the competence center um, to get some uh, step by step orientation on this topic. As well, we have the web links to the terms and conditions and privacy policy of the online learning agreement, the Erasmus dashboard and the Erasmus Plus app as the entrance point for the students. So all the details uh, and even uh, a lot of um, information on all the different purposes, limitations, all the information required can be found if you follow these web links. And this is the outline you need to fulfill to ensure this GDPR compliance that we have tried to elaborate on. So thank you. Uh, so we have uh, in this webinar tried to summarize the basic principles of the general data protection regulation that has come into place uh, in 2018 and uh, which is uh, pertaining to student mobility. Uh, one aspect that is really central here is that we store data, we transfer data transnationally, we might transfer data uh, even outside of the European Union. So uh, we have noticed in the discussion earlier on how the GDPR principles affect the administration of mobility programs. Um, it is of very specific practical relevance, really, for uh, implementation in your institutions as well. In the online learning agreement and dashboard, as we uh, try to uh, describe to you, the GDPR compliance has been a central topic in all the developments, in all the phases. What we have to keep in mind is that the projects are still ongoing. So it is still a process that is followed up on. There are still aspects of the online learning agreement that are being developed or further developed. So um, we will, of course, always update all the implementation, all the measures, and will always keep the measures up to date and make regular reviews of all the setups we have described earlier on. Um, we talked about the central perspective of the project of the online learning agreement and dashboard. But of course, for your institutions, you have to like ask the same questions that we try to elaborate on during the webinar. So to ensure GDPR compliance and student mobility, you at your institution have to 
um, reflect on your procedures. How can I ensure GDPR compliance in all the mobility phases? What data are required for project implementation? And here you have to refer back to the different uh, regulations, to the different requirements, depending on the uh, reference frame you are referring to. What procedures and security measures are already in place in your institution? And what might have to be changed, what might have to be adapted, especially if you interlink your structures, your tools with the other uh, institutions or with the other platforms? And then what is your responsibility at your institution or in your uh, position at your institution? And as we are talking about processes that involve a number of parties, during all the stages of mobility, who else is involved in the process? There is a number of parties that might be involved even at your institution, the uh, student services, career services, uh, services for special needs. There is a number of units you might have to involve in the process. And of course, there's the students, there's the partner institutions. So there's a number of aspects that you have to reevaluate, referring back to the principles of GDPR. Um, this is just a bit of a homework we want to give to you uh, so that after the webinar, if we um, publish the documentation, you have a chance to really apply the information on your institution, on your uh, situation in working in the Erasmus program. With this, I would actually hand over to Daiga uh, because the next part would be uh, the question and answer section but maybe Daiga wants to say a few words and how we want to structure it or maybe say a few comments for the EUF as well. Um, so yes, indeed, I will, I will just very have a brief inter well, uh, summary maybe from my side and also to give you a moment to have, I don't know, think, uh, think about all the, all the things that we now discussed and, and kind of put it, in a, put it down in a question. Um, but indeed, as, as, as Christina already now mentioned, um, it's, it's a very big and very broad topic and, and uh, it's very also important to remember that um, one thing is uh, GDPR, but it's also the national regulations and your internal regulations that you're having at your institutions. So all of those factors and all of those aspects is something that needs to be taken into consideration of how, um, of how exactly you can make sure that uh, all your students and incomings and outgoings are, are I mean, basically, yes, the data is treated in, a, in, in, in the way it, it, it should. And, um, and indeed, it's also the case, and you're very aware of it, that there is no um, overarching European help desk where public institutions can um, basically get, uh, get more guidance, get more consultation of how to, how to get up to speed. And we also know that in some national countries, uh, the way authorities dealt with it and how much um, how much support it was uh, it was available to the public institutions it was very very diverse so um, so in essence we do hope that the materials that we can uh, we can also share within the competence center and from the discussions here it can be something that um, could uh, be a platform to discuss those things and and, and share experiences and share practices um, and basically be able to raise awareness about these topics but because I think that the GDPR in general, it's it's very same um, story as with the, as with the digital Erasmus because it is a culture of change to a certain extent of always um, always thinking of 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 and rethinking your habits and 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 um, it's the reason why um, why yeah I mean it it came into it came into being I mean there are a lot of things that are kind of maybe taken for granted and and. Um, uh, going at the pace of time. I mean, it's it's sometimes it is very useful to kind of reflect on it and 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 make sure that uh, um, that yes, uh, we are always kind of um, doing our best and 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 um, kind of using the using potential that we have, which is digitization, uh, to the best of our knowledge and to the best of our uh, capacity to to really um, well uh, manage Erasmus mobility in, in in a better way, because. It is also a reality that uh, when it comes to paper processes, when we're thinking about GDPR now, then it, it is questionable, for example, of, of to, to what extent, um, yes, the paper is printed out and, uh, and, on, on, and, and being stored and, and how accessible it is and, and how, compliant, um, how compliant all the procedures um, would be if, if we really kind of uh, yeah, try to, try to uh, deconstruct it and, and take it by step by step. And indeed, also, as Christina said, uh, the work is in progress and there are a lot of things and a lot of features that we want to still add and, and will be adding to the online learning agreement. 
uh, international credit mobility, for example, indeed, is one of the next steps. And of course, to make sure that the processes are efficient, it's, it's, it, it would make sense that we are not detaching uh, ICM from uh, the rest of mobilities. But of course, when it comes to uh, that part of um, uh, the, well, involving more than the partners from the from the Europe, I mean, it is, it is some, of course, uh, there will be some additional questions that we have to kind of look into and, and, and zoom in. So, uh, so yes, indeed, um, the online learning agreement and, and, and all the, well, of course, also Erasmus dashboard from the students and the university side, um, it will be growing even more. And um, uh, so we are looking forward also, as, um, as mentioned, to your questions and also your inputs and, and um, well, working, for, working towards it and, and, and advancing it even more. Um, I would I would say that that's very kind of a brief introduction. Well, not the introduction, but the summary from my side. And um, I, I think we can also then uh, then uh, well, I would give floor uh, back to my colleagues with um, uh, from the University of Marburg, and then we can try to take a look at the uh, at some of the some of the questions that uh, that we're having then in the chat section. Thank you, Daiga. Um, we've already started to scan the chat a bit to get some idea of what questions might be uh, most relevant to you. And just to emphasize as well, we will, of course, only tackle a couple of questions now and we won't be able to go into so much depth within this discussion, of course. But we will make sure we have recorded this session to get back to you and as Daga said in the beginning to upload all the information in the competence center so it, your questions even if we might not be able to discuss it now won't be lost but will be tackled by the consortium uh, and we will follow up on this definitely um, maybe I can hand over to you because uh, David um, mm. because uh, David has already prepared some issues of the issues I think I just wrote down the questions but no worries um, do that um just um jump to the last one whether it's possible to use the dashboard for uh traineeships already uh at the moment we're working on that issue so um please hang on with us for a moment on that one but i think for that outline Daiga is more the expert as we are only focusing on the legal aspects of that so if Daiga maybe wants to say something on uh traineeships I, I didn't read that question, but uh, I mean, if it's if it's the if it's about the timelines, then uh, or more features about that, then it's uh, yes, indeed. The, the within the upcoming year, we are planning to advance it further, and and of course allow uh, more in-depth interaction for the for the institutions. Um, or I'm 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 trying to scan it through, but I'm I'm not sure where exactly I'm I'm seeing that and, and what's exactly the kind of the focus there. <laughs> All right, no worries. Um, so yeah, maybe just move on to the question. Sorry, I'm I'm just scanning my my notes. Um, then there was the question: um, Where in the program guide for 2020 uh, the storage period is mentioned? I'm really sorry, I haven't read it yet, so uh, I can't tell you. But I promise. After the session, we'll take a look into it and uh, give an answer on which page you can find the uh, storage period in the program guide for 2020. Um, just, just very brief from, from, from my side, I'm wondering, um, so when it comes to the program guide, and, and I think it's also the, the question of the next, uh, next program framework, which is 2021-2027. Um, so that's one aspect but next to that it's again it, it might be a matter of the national uh the national peculiarities that uh, that need to be then uh, then looked into and, and 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 dealt with but i mean the same way as with templates the same way as, as with, with some other aspects uh, of course uh the commission and dg act are still finalizing the exact shape and exact uh, form and, and and exact aspects of it so um so I, I think that a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of, <laughs> it's still, of course, the, the, the ending phase of it, but uh, a lot of things are being ironed out now. And, and that's uh, quite soon, um, we should have more, much more clarity on how exactly the next program is going to look like for, for everyone involved there. Yeah. I think what is really important is that we have to um, be aware that it's a very dynamic phase at the moment, as well in the program as 
accordingly in the digital projects that we are implementing. So um, uh, that's why we emphasize a lot that, of course, we always update all the structures as well as the GDPR compliance aspects in the projects because uh, we can only follow up on the changes and updates that are implemented, implemented in the program. So um, for now, we have followed the regulations and the structures of the current program. But of course, within this year, we will get a lot of new information, especially, like I mentioned, the aspect of ICM, of maybe for the traineeships for other target groups, where we might have to adapt aspects in the online learning agreement as well, of course. Um, and everything that we have to consider and implement will be updated in the competence center as well. Um, so we have to indeed follow up on this as well. But I think yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, another question that arose here was whether, um, I'm sorry, I have to look it up in the chat again. Um, yeah, one moment, please. Um, whether you need to enter into a data processing agreement with uh, EUF, if that's a European law or national uh, national requirement. Um, also on that matter, I'd say as this is quite a legal point of view, we would come back to that and give you an elaborate answer on that one in the um, aftermath of the meeting, because it's easier to give there a written uh, explanation than stating that orally now. Um, and for the question I started with that uh, nobody can see, I'm really sorry, I just uh, realized that it was only sent to the uh, moderator, so <laughs> we'll give you that question later on as well in the follow-up of the meeting and uh, with an answer to it. So at the moment I don't see any further questions, so... Um, Uh, one moment, there is one question. Oh yeah, of course, I, I understand the last one. Yeah, we will do so. We'll give a general, uh, general answer on that one, not only uh, particularly on this perspective. So, um, if then there is no further question, I once again hand over to Daiga. Um, Oh, there's there's one, and I'm I'm not really sure if I understand that question correct. So, if you could elaborate on on that a little bit more. So, which aspect are you referring to? I'm guessing, but I'm, I'm, it might be the case of um, so the. Um. In no. inspection, uh, yeah. so yeah, basically, what could be the the first? Okay, um, the best thing to start off with is getting in touch with your data protection officer from uh, your institution and see what he suggests, what measures are actually already in place for your institution, and then check what your own procedures are and where you need to adopt to being GDPR compliant and what needs to be added to the existing structures you already have in place. But Christina also yep. wants to uh, come on. I didn't want to interrupt you, but just um, because it's, I think, a very relevant question because and I think a lot of us are at the point where we have heard about GDPR, we know it's relevant for the mobility programs and that we have to do something, but it's so much and it's uh, such a, like a, a like a threatening entity that uh, many of us have not really gone into detail of how to proceed. And of course, we all had the same issue. We all had to start at some point. And what was really helpful was really to, if you summarize, you 
take a step back and reevaluate your procedures for especially for Erasmus. You can focus on this project, this part of the project, really student mobility. You have to get an overview of what tools and platforms are you using, what data you are processing at what stage who has access to the data and then you have of course to see what is mandatory by the program what is part of your internal structures and this will really help you to get a better grasp on your procedures and might even help you to simplify some measures to better integrate the different tools because a lot of the digital tools will be mandatory in the near future so you have to prepare the structures and it doesn't help to just keep up the procedures you have been dealing with for the last 10 years. Uh, so GDPR can really be seen as a chance, as a, an opportunity to um, have a closer look at some of the procedures. And it's at, in the beginning, it might seem a lot. And of course, there are aspects that you cannot decide on. Um, and there are aspects that you can actually work on and change. So um, as David said, uh, one really relevant contact point for you is your DPO, your data protection officer at your institution. And your part in this is to really get a grasp on the whole structure that you are working with. So you can give all this information uh, to your DPO because they don't know the program. That's often the problem with the internal communication at the institutions that you know the Erasmus program, the DPO knows maybe GDPR. Uh, but the communication between these different units is often really, really um, difficult to initiate. So it helps a lot if you prepare information that they can work with so they can really help you along on implementing GDPR in the Erasmus program. So just as a, a, a annotation from the IRO perspective, um, and I hand over again to the legal experts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I think there's nothing I can add to that. <laughs> so, are there just any more? Very, very, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, according to that, of course, uh, as to the as to the last question, I um, uh, definitely agree to that. Um, it's just that yes, trying to screen to the through the chat, there was another question that I noticed that uh, we slightly uh, um, we we didn't uh, we didn't address yet. I think. Um, it's from the, um, yeah, it's basic about kind of uh, possibility to provide some um, more uh, official confirmation about the tools. And what I, what I would be kind of wondering about there is, is, is what exactly, so, so to say, what the colleague has in mind and, and, and what would be the, um, the exact nature of, of such confirmation that you would be looking for. I mean, effectively what we are stating and, and inside of our terms and conditions and, and inside of also, of course, the, the, um, the materials that we are producing is that, yes, all the tools are designed to fulfill the both the Erasmus program uh, rules and other applicable rules, which is, of course, by default, uh, GDPR. I mean, everything that everything that is being created has to be in line with the GDPR and it's really done according to the state of the art of, of and the guidelines of the um, of, of, of the Commission and, and, and other relevant, relevant stakeholders which for example would be then the, the national authorities of for example yes how the, um, how the databases have to be registered or um, so I mean in essence we are trying to do our best to um, also, of course, then, then, then explain maybe those details in more, um, uh, in more uh, uh, elaborate terms, so to say, in, inside of the documentation, which is, uh, yes, terms and conditions of privacy policy, but of course, we know that uh, it's a lengthy documentation, it's also very legal documentation, so we, we are trying to do our best to add to that, also more user-friendly and, and maybe more um, concise and more uh, um, uh, material that that could be um, yeah uh, maybe used by broader audiences. I'm, I'm, I don't have the legal background myself, so it's uh, it's something that I'm, I'm um, I am very very happy to to get up to speed with that and and and, and look into that uh, and in general being a very very devoted uh, supporter and 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 being uh, very happy that GDPR in general came into force and and that we have it and and being proud that um, that just yes, uh, Europe. Europe got that far and, and, and um, it's a reality now and not just for Europe but also beyond. Um, so, so effectively yes, it's, um, we are, we, I mean we would be happy then if, if, if you want to elaborate more on that but, uh, uh, but yeah, that, that would maybe be my, my explanation for that. Um, 
actually, actually I, uh, I can just agree to, to what you stated now. So I, I, I wouldn't see any, anything else uh, to, to add to that at the moment. So I don't know if, if there's not any more questions uh, you'd like to ask. I'd really hand over to Daiga again. Um, go on to the next slide. Uh, so yes, um, well, as, as far as I know from the when I last uh, saw the, the 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 presentation, there was another slide, <laughs> basically in trying to inform uh, about the, the next event and the, the next, so to say, chance. Um, uh, yes, uh, exactly. And the the, the next uh, the next message that I see also in the chat is exactly about that, and it's about the Rosmus Gross Digital uh, Conference in Luxembourg that is going to take place already quite soon, less than a month. Um, and uh, indeed, uh, the GDPR topics will be one of the uh, aspects that we will be discussing in a plenary. Um, so it will be something that uh, we'll be able to do in, the, in a bigger group and, and, and be able then to, of course, share the questions and, 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 and answers and, and, uh, and have the, have the follow-up in, um, in a, quite a big group. We are having uh, 150 participants there. And uh, so, and um, we're doing our best also to make sure that the flu season and any cancellations that might be, might be taking place there uh, that we can take upon um, all the people from the waiting list as, 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 as many as we can. We see that the interest is very, um, uh, very broad. And by the way, we'll have the next conference then in June. So also not so, so far, far away, but still um, we see that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of interest and, and we want to do justice to that as well. Um, so GDPR will be the topic. And uh, in the meantime, um, I, yeah, that is the, the, the webinar was quite, uh, quite, um, well, we were very efficient to go through the, the questions and uh, in case you're still kind of, well, uh, there's still any, any, any aspects that you might be wondering about. Um, I think that, uh, yes, uh, also the compliance section uh, inside, of the, inside of the Rasmus Zero Paper um, Competence Center will be a place where you can maybe uh, share your comments. Uh, I, think, I think we can open the, um, I'll open the, the, the tool to, for being able to kind of share the feedback there. Um, or, of course, yes, um, as, 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 as mentioned also by David, uh, you can always, of course, reach out to us and, and, and um, we'll be able to follow up on the, uh, on, the question, on, the, on the questions also on a bilateral basis. But uh, we always try to, uh, yes, make sure that we can, uh, can do it in a, um, in a fashion that allows um, benefiting also to, for the for the bigger audience and in case those questions might be um, relevant also for others so um, well um, we can try to continue the discussions there and um, well if you in the meantime have, have, have any aspects that you are kind of wondering well and and um, would love to follow up on then uh, please do so and um, um, uh, and and yes we will then try to uh, try to continue those discussions in, in, on different grounds. And because I, I do believe in general, uh, the next program um, will have quite some, uh, quite some interesting updates and uh, this topic will not be, this will not be the last time when we are discussing the compliance matters, because of course it's, it's of utmost importance for everyone. Will the conference be recorded uh, in Luxembourg? Um, I still unfortunately have to confirm that. Um, indeed, we see that the interest is so big that we would love to ensure um, that it is possible, but it's it's the, some last details that we have to uh, agree uh, with uh, with the organizers and the kind of the Luxembourg University team of how exactly it would be um, possible for them to ensure um, well from the technical perspective. So it's 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 to be finalized, but uh, we we hope to announce it as soon as possible. So um, um, so I hope maybe by the end of the uh, end of this week we can already kind of know that. Um, yes, any, any aspects that uh, maybe my colleagues from the University of Marburg would still want to add? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry, I was muted. Uh, so no, thank you, Daiga. Thank you so much for uh, the summary and especially for referring to the conference as well. Um, because I think this is a really important platform. We will try to address the GDPR topic as well. 
and of course again see how it relates to the individual packages within ola and the dashboard um, from our side i think uh, we have tried to cover a lot of ground in this uh, one hour and uh, as like i said what is really important for you is to refer back to the competence center which is really hands-on so uh, a couple of colleagues asked for how to start gdpr or how to do some of the aspects uh, we have the faqs there we have good practice in the competence center so it really helps you to start the process um, from our side i want to thank you all for your attention and i hope to maybe see some of you in luxembourg then uh, in a few weeks time thank you Indeed, and and yes answering to the last uh, last question from the from the chat uh yes um luxembourg mid of february uh, the conference will take place uh, yes very soon and then it's the one uh, yes, next event. And thank you so much. Uh, the the uh, one of the colleagues already posted the um, posted the link where you can see the details about the upcoming events. It will be taking place in Thessaloniki. Um, uh, University of Thessaloniki will be hosting us. It will be 16th of June. And uh, when it comes to agenda and when it comes to the discussions that will be taking place, we will we are finalizing the of course the the topics and uh, and uh, yes agenda points but we'll hope to send more details then as, uh, as well share as soon as possible and of course Erasmus Center Paper Competence Center uh, that should be the place that is most up to date on those matters but indeed then um, thank you so much for everything and, and um, I will be wishing you a very nice afternoon and um, as mentioned um, if there are any questions then please uh, do not hesitate and, and do reach out to us and uh, we'll be looking forward to continuing those discussions in Luxembourg, in um, in Thessaloniki, and of course, via webinars and via national agency meetings and, and, and many other events where I'm very, very sure we are going to meet each other. So yes, um, all the very best and, and uh, yeah, uh, see you soon.